Welcome to How Preschool Teachers Do It. This is Allison Kentos. I am an early childhood educator. And this is Cindy Tarabush. I am an early childhood consultant. This podcast is for parents and early childhood professionals. Let our experience and research-based knowledge become your guide. It's another Monday, everybody. Welcome. Hi, peeps. As at the start of this episode of the podcast, we want to ask you to be sure to stay to the very end because we're going to introduce a new segment today called the Feedback Five that you might want to participate in or be interested in. So hang with Mm us. In the meantime, we're going to talk about when the crying in the classroom becomes contagious, which often happens, especially when you're working with children ages three and under, I think. (laughs) Yeah. Like in that two-year-old classroom or that mobile infant classroom, a child starts crying and all of a sudden we've got three or four kids crying. Well, yeah. They don't even know why. (laughs) They don't know why. why. They're just, just, if somebody's crying, surely the jig must must be up in here. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's how I would feel if I walked into a room of people who were crying. So I'd be like, um, you make a valid point. Should I be crying too? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't we, wouldn't we, if we walked into a room of crying people, wouldn't you be like, is this a funeral? What's happening here? Yeah. Like what did mm, something did, terrible happen something? in the news? Did, yeah. Did I miss something? How should I act here? Maybe that's what the kids are on. saying. Yeah, the that's kids, exactly what I think is going through their head. The kids <laughs> come in, a child is crying. They look around and go, did I miss something on the news here? What's happening in this classroom? Yeah. Something yeah. is unsafe. And so therefore I'm going to express my anxiety through crying. Right. Right. It's, right, it, it definitely is contagious. They talk about laughter being contagious. And I'm going to tell you, no, you want to see contagious, go into a two-year-old classroom when someone is crying, if you want to see contagious. Yeah. <laughs> like that. You want to go from one crying toddler to five. <laughs> That's in no time go. flat. In no time at all. Like <laughs> because yeah. that, that concern, whatever's going on with the child, that concern spreads. And there's lots of reasons why that happens. And, you know, a lo- I've seen, I've seen some comedy routines. They cut, I, it's not funny when you're in it. It's funny when you're an observer, when, yeah. <laughs> when you see this, when you see this happening, but then you see teachers like trying to avoid the contagion by like, you see them like literally leap over tall buildings to get to that truck crying child <laughs> to try and help they that know child the calm is, down. The spread is quick. Yeah. The sprint is <laughs> they know. no joke. No joke. Yeah. Cause you know, that's gonna, <laughs> that's gonna be contagious very quickly and you need to put a stop to it. Now. <laughs> I have, I have seen some amazing feats of people yeah. trying to get to those <laughs> Jumping children. over things. Yeah. And, and in <laughs> fact, I probably performed, when I think about it, I probably performed some of those feats of myself. When I first started working in early childhood, I worked in a toddler room. That's how I know this so well. So if you're out there and you work with toddlers, <laughs> like, hey, um, I know what you're going through. And it's sometimes the funniest place in the world to be. And other times when there's things like contagious crying, it is like, it is. I remember I a couple of times <laughs> when, when the crying became contagious and I was like, I'm just going to cry along with them. Mm-hmm. And I, oh, I've had that. Oh, right? I absolutely have I that. Just, where I'm like, I need to take a step back here. <laughs> you know what? You know what often gets their attention though? If you pretend to cry. Yes. Right. Yes, you pretend to cry and then <laughs> yeah. all of a sudden they are all just like they stop and they just stare at you yeah because they're like no we're having a moment here not you <laughs> they do they just like look like what is she crying now like what's yeah. happening right now that sometimes can get their attention but wouldn't you think though that that would just be the opposite like they'd be like, oh no, now the teacher's crying too? Like something's really wrong here and more kids would cry, but it doesn't. It has like this- No, it stops like, oh, them let me, usually. Let me help, let me help her. But I don't understand the mentality. So like if children crying makes it spread, but them seeing an adult cry, even though they're faking it, how come that doesn't make it spread? Maybe if I was actually crying, they would cry. Maybe it would, yeah. Like they can sense that it's not real. So Maybe. they're like, oh, let me help her. I don't she's know. Being, putting on an act, so eh. <laughs> you know what I mean? don't know. 
I'm yeah. about to cry because I can hear the lawn people outside <laughs> while we're well, recording this. Yeah. Uh, we're going to have to try and, I, okay, good. We're going to have to try and so take that out, the good. background noise. Sorry, yeah. folks. <laughs> uh, you know, the hazards. Trust me, and, I've, I live in like the middle of a town where seriously, we've had like the fire whistle go off in the middle of an episode. So like, what can you do? There, what are you going to do? There's and, only so much you can do. Uh, yeah. know, but we're going to, we we won't cry. We don't want that to be contagious. It's and and I, 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 I also want to point out about contagious emotions. I think many emotions can be contagious. Yeah. Many emotions um, spread from person to person. And I definitely have that experience when I watch things like the Olympics, yeah. um, which, yeah. which are happening as we record this, the, the Academy Awards, the Emmy Awards, um, Kennedy Center Honors. Oh God. That's another one that I, <laughs> another so, one. so I get people, it watching um, like some, some of these talent shows on TV. I get some of that because I'm like, Oh, their dreams are coming true. Well, to see that's, so there's a, an emotional yeah. connection, <laughs> yeah. I think, right. Yeah. There's an emotional connection as human beings. We are hardwired to connect to people. So there I am picture this. I'm watching the Olympics. Someone I have never met will never meet, do not know, and do not understand their sport wins a gold medal <laughs> and they are jumping up and down and crying and hugging their coaches and I start crying yeah no what? I've been there I was what? there last night I, I watching swimming yeah like I the swimming I'm done so there was it gets me there every was time a swimmer, yeah. a swimmer last <laughs> night from Alaska who doesn't even have a full-length pool to practice in who got a gold medal over someone like Katie Ledecky, who was the, the favorite for this, I know. defending I know. medals. And she won. So this, this uh, person from Alaska won and they show, now I don't cry when she wins, but they Not show like, her she high wins. school. She's in high school. Her high school. They show her kids. high school. Yeah. <laughs> her high school classmates in a large room watching her win. And they are jumping up and down. And the moment they realize she won, they are hugging each other and screaming. Yeah. And I start crying. I don't know those kids. I don't know her. I will never meet these people. I <laughs> I don't I'm pretty sure if they put me in that pool, I, I wouldn't even make it off the block safely. So <laughs> I'm not sure why I am so I emotional. Know. I know another one, the awards. Although oh, the awards. I, I have very, I'll be honest. I, I, I watch, I have watched them um, in the past. I've thoroughly enjoyed them though. Having lived through this past year, I realize how shallow they can be perceived as. So I have watched <laughs> yeah. people get Academy Awards, Emmy Awards, um, and, and when they get up and they're all choked up and thanking people, uh, I get choked up. I've watched people be honored at things like the Kennedy Center Honors or even smaller things. I've watched people be honored in my field of work. Yeah. They're yeah, being honored. Me. I'm not being honored. I'm sitting there yeah. crying for the person being honored. There's yeah. something about the emotional connection that I think we well, see in that toddler room. I also think it's the in that instance, the Olympics and these awards ceremonies, it's the, for adults at least, it's the culmination of like, you know, like that person put years of work, you know, yeah. into that. And so it's like, there's like a little bit of like this, I guess, American dream going on where you're like, oh, that could have been me had I just joined gymnastics at age five. You know what I mean? Like you have like this, like, <laughs> oh, that, that. yeah, this could be me. And like, or this could be anybody. These are just like people who could be your neighbors, you know? So there is this connection thing. And I think like the same thing in the toddler room, there's a connection there with those kids. So like their laughter is contagious too, but their fears and upset and anxieties are contagious also, you know? So like, just like in a room of adults, like when we go to these, you know, teacher <laughs> awards or whatever in our field, we might not know that person, but we also know all the work that got put into that you know what I mean and there is a connection there I also think we begin to imagine what we would feel like in that position I would lose my mind <laughs> if I was in could that position okay could you imagine no. that well, I winning a medal that no. oh, holy crap <laughs> I even had that last night when I was watching all those high school students that were in that Alaska hometown of that that swimmer I was like, man, I hope I'm 
in a position one day in my life that that many people who barely know me are also cheering for me. And I thought, I'm like, that's that brings up a question. <laughs> why, <laughs> why, do we want, why do we want people I don't know. who barely know us to cheer for us? Well, why do we need that, right? I don't know. There is be these questions and more. Support, right? I know, but why do we need that? Like there's well, some sort of like want and need for that. I'm like, that would be awesome yeah. if I ever had that, but I don't have that. So like, I cry for the girl who did get that. <laughs> I know? think there's, I think depending on the human and their experiences as an adult, as a child, then they become adult. And then adults have different needs for attention, just like children have different needs for attention. You know what? There's always a parallel process, always between childhood and adulthood. It's not so different. It's, we may be on different paths, but the processes are very often the same. Adults also need attention. Adults also crave connection, just like children do. And just like adults crave connection and just like our brains are wired. You know, why is my brain, when I watch someone achieve something like that, why does my brain go to, gee, Cindy, what would that feel like if you could do it? Because we're, we're trying to connect to the moment, I think. And I think children do the same thing. They're connecting to the moment they're in someone in the room is upset, yeah. they become upset. Well, they're connecting yeah. to the person, I to the moment. Like, they also probably are thinking what's going on in here, like we said before. Right. I also wonder if like for adults, we always, like there is this, like, I would love to have a cheering gym cheering for me like but like because I think we always want and need support even if we're adults and we're successful in our fields we still need support to get there and I wonder if like these children who like if one's crying if they since they really don't know how to handle emotions they're like oh I'll support him too let me cry too you know and that's their way of like I'm here like they're thinking of like I'm here for you. Look, we're in the same boat kind of thing. Like, I wonder if in their little minds, that's what they're thinking. Like, that's my way to support them is by having the same emotional reaction. Could that be it? I don't Maybe. know. Yeah. All right. So if we come to the conclusion that this is all about at the bottom line about those connections, it also, you know, ch for young children, it's the beginning of the development of compassion mm -hmm. and empathy. And so the people now are listening and thinking, well, do you have some sort of hints and tips for this? And I'm going to tell you what a hint and tip as far as I'm <laughs> concerned is the children who begin to cry, I want to phrase this correctly, begin to cry after the original child is crying they're still upset. Yeah. We're not going to demean them. We're not going to poo poo them. We're not going to be like, Oh, cut it out. Cut it out. Or what are you crying about? Yeah. There's, you know what? Like, and for there's... goodness sake, that whole, there's nothing to cry about phrase. Well, obviously there is because people oh are crying. Well, yeah. And I also want you to imagine like how as an adult, it would make you feel if another adult came up to you and be like, what are you crying about? You know, like clearly I'm upset about something. So why would you say that to a child? Like they're clearly upset about something. So listen, as part of that parallel <laughs> process, as part of that right. parallel, I fully yeah. appreciate that my husband does not make fun of me for crying mm -hmm. along with the latest Kennedy the Center on the Olympians, yeah, <laughs> yeah, or the Olympians. I, I'm really, I'm grateful that he just kind of is like, okay, let's you be you. Let lets you me be, be me. Yeah. And and I think we have to do the same for the kids, and we have to be comforting to all of them. And we have what we have to do is get everybody to try and take a deep breath with us. Yeah. Everybody, let's see if we can calm our bodies. Yeah. Whoever wants a hug gets a hug. A hug. If they don't, that's about fine. Why we're upset. Yeah. We're going to yeah. talk about. Let's talk about why we're upset. We look sad. You're crying. Yeah. You must be sad. We're going to treat everybody's reaction the same as you would treat the original upset or victim or whatever it is. Yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah. 
Because why, why do we dismiss that when, if children are building skills for compassion and empathy and all that by emoting, by showing their yeah. emotions, why are we trying to squash it by saying things like, there's nothing to cry about. You're yeah. being silly. You're just crying because this person cried. There's nothing happening here. Why are we doing that? They actually yeah. are building important skills for the future so that someday they will be sitting like the two of us watching an <laughs> Olympic medal winner and yeah. feeling what they and feel. Feeling it. Yeah. <laughs> and feeling it. Right. Yeah. Feel what they feel. It's not yeah. a bad thing, whether it's yeah. happiness, sadness. You know, when, when you've suffered a tragedy or a trauma and people look at us as adults and say, instead of saying, don't feel that way, because they yeah. say to us, feel that way. Yeah. I understand why you feel that way. Yeah. It's okay that you are upset, scared, um, that, that you're feeling this event. Yeah. But I feel like in our society, mental health is so stigmatized. It is. That it's almost like they don't want you to feel. And feeling is okay, no matter how you feel. You should have a range of emotions. But I feel like it's so, everybody wants you to just be like, no, you should just be like this all the time. You should be happy all the time. You should just be content all the time. It's like, no, that's not life. That's not and like. And when the toddlers, uh, cry because someone else is crying it's sort of like the toddler equivalent of feel your pain yeah i i i you have a right to feel sad um been there been yeah. really sad myself if there's anything yeah. that i can do to help yeah. right right that's a toddler's way of saying that they don't yeah. have a way to say that they don't know so they're trying to i feel offer support and but they don't know how out. to. And they're figuring yeah. it and all out. they're trying out. to figure that out. Yeah. All learning is a process. That's part of the process. Please respect their individual feelings. Yeah. And yeah. that's the biggest hint and tip we can give. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Also, that whole routine you do by jumping over the bookshelf to get to the child, you know, you could try that. <laughs> You could try that. But I wonder. I wonder sometimes if that that adds to the. It um, does. It adds to the, the, the drama in the room. The drama of it all. So they're like, "Whoa, she's jumping over bookshelves. Something must be <laughs> really wrong here." Yeah. <laughs> Did you Five see more. her move? <laughs> he has, or he yeah. has never moved that quickly in the class. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so that's yeah. that's that. And now, yeah. now I think it's time to introduce what we hope to do at the end of many episodes. The feedback, feedback five. five, and here's what yeah. that is. <laughs> we have been getting and have gotten in the past some really awesome responses to topics that we have done during this podcast. And we are going to highlight some of the feedback that's sent to us mm -hmm. at the end of episodes. So if you have something you want to add or say that you think would be helpful to listeners, mm -hmm. please send us that information, either by sending us a message on Facebook, our Facebook page is How Preschool Teachers Do It, or go to howpreschoolteachersdoit.com and send the contact form. And we might pick your feedback to feature during the Feedback Five. Now, here's why it's called the Feedback Five. <laughs> we are literally going to feature feedback in no more than five minutes. Five minutes, yeah. So there's limits to this, folks. And it may take a little practice, but here's how it's going to go for today. Anyway, I'm going yeah. to share <laughs> one piece of feedback related to a recent episode and Allison's going to time me so that we can perfect so this. Cause, no, yeah. Cause we don't want our episodes to go too, too long. We don't. <laughs> and, and by episode 139, you all know how much I like to talk. So this is going to be a challenge. <laughs> it's like the new Olympic sport. Ken I, Cindy. I, I, <laughs> goodness what does I, she get if she does this in less than five minutes uh i should get something i'm the girl who should. always got in trouble in school for talking so let's see how this goes i know but look at where it got you i i get paid you to have talk a job today, to talk. I know. <laughs> okay so all right you ready are should you I start ready the timer? are you ready and, well, and uh, when you're wait, ready before, i'll hit start be wait, before i start before you start the timer <laughs> hang on i just want to give this disclaimer if now or ever i mispronounce your name 
I do fully apologize. I'm going to do my best. We're going to try. <laughs> yeah. If you send things in the future, you know, feel free to send a little recording of pronunciation if you would like. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Ready? <laughs> Ready? Hitting yeah. start. Go. A Go. couple of episodes ago or so, we talked about how to talk about children's progress. And we talked about the word failing, I believe. Yes. We received some information from a preschool peep named Kelly Barden Mercure. I hope that was right, Kelly, yeah. who shared with us how they phrase this in her school. She said, in my school, they use beginning, developing and proficient for our assessments. She always explains that the children are being assessed at their individual age and developmental level. For example, what might be considered proficient for a specific skill at pre-K may be beginning at pre-K four. So it's pre-K three and pre-K four. I slightly yeah. mispronounced that, right? So yeah. what's considered proficient for a specific skill at, skill at pre-K three may be beginning for pre-K four. Well, that makes sense, right? Because it, it depends on the level yeah. at which they're teaching the skill, at which they're teaching the skill and the right and their the age the and yeah. lots of factors. So yeah. it, it isn't yeah. as much a formula as a look at individual skills, ages, development and children. Right. So again, the, those words that she uses are beginning, developing and proficient. Yeah. If you folks use other words that you feel like should be added on as a future feedback five contact yeah. us yeah. and let us know. But in the meantime, we want to very much thank Kelly yeah, for thank sharing you, that, Kelly. for giving us permission to quote her mm -hmm. and for helping everyone's learning. So thanks, Kelly. Thank you. How'd I do? Was that within five? That was good. You have three minutes left. Oh my gosh. It was within two. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> now I know I can do more. So stay more. tuned. Maybe I'll talk more, <laughs> more about y'all as we yeah. go go forward and share feedback if you do send something and you're like wow i hope they use it and i hope they say my name we only can do that with permission yeah so we'll always ask you after the fact right and then if you don't and you can, and you can also say, say no mm -hmm. you can also say no yeah <laughs> you can say no you can also when you contact us say and you have permission to quote me yeah and to use my name like, you know, because some people might say you can quote me, but don't use my name. That's also okay, too. <laughs> you know, but right. yeah, just let us know. Correct. Okay. Yeah, we have such awesome peeps. Can I just say that? We really do. But <laughs> we we're going to really let do. them go now because, you know. The, yeah, we have to. Yeah. It, we'll the last forever. two minutes, we did, that's what <laughs> put us over the top. Yeah. <laughs> we'll catch you next time on the podcast, peeps. Bye, peeps. Bye.